Welcome back to the SSAS training session, guys. So in last session, we discussed about creating the date time dimensions on the database by creating the table on the database and uh, directly by creating on the server and uh, creating templates for uh, different uh, di different uh, uh, types of data like account, customer, and so on. Now, we have done enough on dimensions. Let's see on cubes now, how to create cube and what is cube. You know what is dimension. So it's more like a, the one how you want to see the data, in which angle you want to see the data, or in which dimension you want to see the data. That information will be available in the dimensions that you have designed. Now, the cubes is nothing but this holds the metric information, like what data you want to see or what is the data that you can use to analyze your business or to performance the key performance, I mean, to calculate the key performance indicators. So you need some goal or you need some metric information, right, to find out what's the status and how the business is performing. So you'll have that metric information and also the relationship between the dimensions and the metric data. So if you don't set the relationship, then, um, you can't see the data properly and it's as useless as um, a trash paper or tissue paper. It, it, it won't be helpful at all. I'll show you that, okay, uh, in a couple of minutes. First, let me start uh, with the cube designing. And if you see at the welcome wizard, you can see, use this wizard to create a new cube. First, you select the data source, view, tables, blah, 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 and so on. So if you click on next, you have um, three options. One is use existing tables, like you can use the existing tables that are available in the data source view or that are selected in the data source view to create the cube and uh, also dimensions. So it will create everything, okay? Create an empty cube, which I normally prefer, like um, it will create an empty cube and you have to do it manually. And the third one is generate tables in the data source. So you can generate the tables in the data source and we'll see this option too. And you can see create tables in the underlying data source. You may have permission to create. Uh, you must have permission to create objects in the underlying data source. So first, let me quickly show you what is this use existing tables and why I don't prefer it. First, let me go ahead with this. Click on next and it will list all the tables that are available in the data source view. And if you have multiple data source views, you can select what data source view you want to use as source to create the cube so we have only one so let it be the same and measure group tables i have to select what are all the tables that has metric information in other words we call it as measure group tables so i have fact internet sales and fact reseller sales where i have the metric information click on next and it is automatically detecting all the integer columns because metric is basically an integer column right or a numeric in short in other words so Promotion key is an integer, right? But you don't need this. This is not, a, a, you, you are not gonna analyze any business based on the promotion key value. Key value is used just to give the reference, right? Just to, to give the relationship or to establish a relationship between the dimension and the uh, measure group. But here, what you are gonna select is measures, okay? Measure in the sense the metric, which holds the metric information which holds some meaningful data like sales amount or tax amount, which can be used for the analysis purpose or calculating the performances. So here, promotion key is just used for relationship and hence you don't need it here. So revision number, you may need it, but in this case, let's not order quantity. It's a good metric. How much order by a particular customer? You can calculate if you have this order quantity and unit price, you may need it. And extended amount, let's not have it now. Discounted um, discount amount, you can have product standard cost. You don't need it. total product cost, sales amount, tax amount, freight, and packed internet sales account. Let's not worry about this now. And here, let's not uh, select this measure group table because it has the same columns, but reseller sales. Uh, so we have to rename every column, which will I, I show you shortly. So for demonstration purpose, I have taken only one major group table that is fact internet sales and I have selected few metrics that are required for my analysis from the major group table. Click on next and it is asking for the dimensions that you want to. And uh, I have product theme date, uh, sorry, product date and um, 
uh, customer these are the existing dimensions you can see these are the dimensions that I have created uh, if I have not created anything here okay then it won't show here this this page will not be shown it will directly take you to the next page okay and here it is saying select new dimensions do you want to create more dimensions um, I don't want to create a dimension on fact internet sales because this is a fact table and currency yes I do want to create one dimension on the currency and sales territory yes I do so click on next and you can see this is the cube name and this is the measure group you selected and these are the measures you selected and these are the dimensions you selected if you click on finish the first thing is while creating this you can't rename the dimension and the dimension names and everything you have to do it once you created it so that is not a good uh, idea right so this is the dimension that got created now when I when I try to create um, the adventure works DW cube and currency is another dimension and if you see the fact the measure groups are added under the measure groups pane this is the cube which we have created and this is the data source view which is used to create this particular date particular cube that means the difference between the data source view and the cube data source view is here you will have all the tables that have been picked from uh, the data source but here only the tables that are used to create the cube so for creating this cube I need these tables so these are the tables and yellow one says this has been used as a fact table and blue one says it has been used as the dimension table and this is the measure group which we have selected fact internet sales and these are the measures which we picked and this is the dimension table so these are the dimensions that are selected uh, while creating the cube and if you see these three are the dimensions which we created and uh, we named it and uh, we we selected the required attributes but the dimensions that are created by using the name I mean cube creation template is it will take only the key columns you have to come here again and you have to select this stuff manually so what are all the attributes you want you just uh, drag and drop the stuff so and similarly for currency um, currency name and here if you see this is the problem so again you have to come back to the dimensions and work on everything so it, it will give you just a template like what is the measure group and what what are the measure groups and what are the dimensions and it will create cube on top of it uh, to be honest it helps you to reduce your work by a little bit but I don't prefer it the only reason is I just want to uh, it's it's easy to go ahead with requirements and step by step like um, if my requirement says that I want to cre uh, see the data from the product dimension table based on color and in English product name while creating the dimension itself I can pick those attributes here that is not the case if I use the option use existing tables it will just start with the uh, creation of the product and then I have to go back and make the changes and so on okay so there is one reason I don't go ahead with um, um, create a cube based on existing tables but if you are, if you feel comfortable you can go ahead with that so let me delete it that is about the option creating a cube using the existing tables let me delete this title now let me show you how we can create a cube uh, by selecting an empty cube option so the second option here is create an empty cube if I select this then it's asking me what is the data source view that you want to um, build on, on top of uh, I mean uh, that you want to build a cube um, so you have to select the data source view and uh, click on next and here it's saying adventure works dw 2014 is your cube name is it fine if it's fine you can go ahead with that or else you can rename it and this is an empty one right empty cube so no measure group selected no dimension selected click on finish it's an empty cube it's a blank cube in other words okay now what is the next step when you use the wizard to create based on the existing tables the first step we, we, we did was like creating the measure groups let's see where the measures and measure groups are how to create it. so this pane is for creating the measures and measure groups so don't get confused measures and measure groups measure group is a table and each column from the table is called measure so if you have 100 metrics from in a table you can use only two also if your requirement says that uh, these two are enough for 
uh, your analysis purpose, then you can add only these two measures from this measure group table. So here, the table which holds the measures are, the measures is called as measure group table, and the metric information is called measures. Now, let me show you. When I right click here, I have an option to create a single measure or create a measure group. The difference is, if I create, if I select the new measure group, then it will show the table to pick. So if I select, okay, this is the measure group, Fact Internet Sales, and if I click on OK, then it will go in and you can see the Fact Internet Sales table has been added to the data source view of the cube, and it is showing in yellow. That means it's a measure group table. And if you expand this, it will go get every integer column from that, a numeric column from that, and it will create a measure on top of it. And what you have to do next, you have to delete all the nonsense columns from here. Promotion key, no, I, I'm not going to use that. And unit price discount, let's say I'm not going to use that. And even count, I don't want to use this, blah, blah, blah. So you have to go ahead and delete each and every measures. The next option, which I prefer to go ahead, if I, ha if I need to select only one or two or max five metrics from a measure group table is, or from a fact table is, going with the option new measure. If I select new measure, it will show you the list of tables to select. Let's say fact internet sales, and it will ask you to pick the column which you want to use as your measure, and also the usage. The usage is you will have a lot of usages, like you want to sum or you want which function you want to use or which aggregate function you want to use. Sum, max, min, distinct count, and so on. We'll be discussing about all this stuff. I mean, all the aggregate functions. First, let's go with the default value sum. So what the sum will do is, let's say I select it for sales amount, okay? And if I don't select any dimension, then it will give the total sum of sales amount in the fact table. And let's say I selected year, then it will give me sum of sales amount year wise. And let's say I selected year and month, then it will give me year month wise sales amount, sum of sales amount. So the function, the aggregate function, which we will be using when you, when we drag and drop this particular trip, particular measure is sum. Similarly, you can go for count. Similarly, you can go for um, first non-empty value, last non-empty value. There are so many functions which we can use, which we will uh, um, discuss in a dedicated session. So here I added one measure. And let's say I want to add one more measure. So select the same. And here, select the table and uh, let's say tax amount. Click on OK. Now we can see. So, if I want to add only a few metrics from a measure group table or fact table, then I prefer to go ahead with the new measure option. Or uh, if a lot of columns, a lot of metrics are there in a measure group table, then I go ahead and create a measure group table and remove all the unwanted measures from there. Now, this is the first step which we have done while creating the cube using template, using wizard, right? Sorry, not template, it's wizard. Now the second step was selecting the dimensions. So I said cube is nothing but collection of measure groups or measures and dimensions and relationship between these two. So we have done the first job here, adding the measure groups to the cube. The next job is adding the dimensions. So Remember, when you want to add a cube dimension, we call the dimensions that has been added to this pane are called as cube dimensions, okay? I'll explain you why we call it as cube dimensions. So add cube dimensions and it will display only the dimensions that are available in the dimensions folder. So let me select product and the product dimension has been added. Now, this is the second step of the cube, like selecting the measure groups is the first, selecting the dimensions is the second, and the third one is setting the relationship between these two. And if I go, I can provide the relationships in the dimension usage tab. The second one is called as dimension usage tab. When I select this, and you can see the relationship between the, the, this dimension and this measure group is given here. So the relationship is set by default. So we don't need to work on that. Why it is setting default or how it is setting the relationship default? Just because you designed your data source view properly. So I added product, right? So this is the dim product and this is the fact internet sales. The relationship is set in the data source view. So it automatically sets the relationship in the cube too. Let's say the customer, right? 
the customer is another dimension I have here. So the customer and the fact internet sales, there is a relationship. Let me delete it for now. And I'm going to the cube. I'm trying to add a new cube dimension that is customer. And if I select this, the dimension is added. And if I go to the dimension, you see the relationship is not set by default because there is no relationship defined between these two tables, this dimension table and the uh, fact internet says fact table in the data source view. So this is why I always highlight that data source view is very, very important while designing the SSAS cube and it will make your work easy if you design the SSAS data source view properly. So take time and spend a lot of time if required in designing the data source view, but make sure it is designed properly. Now, we'll be discussing about this uh, relationship, how to give the relationship manually if the relationship is not defined in the data source view. Um, in, in in short period of time, I mean, uh, in a couple of minutes. Before that, let's discuss one important topic. So why I have product here and why I have product here, what is the difference between these two dimensions? So the dimensions that is in the database level and that, that means in the data dimensions folder, we call it as database dimensions. So these dimensions are at a database level. You can have thousand, not thousand, that is not good um, to be honest. Maximum 50 to 80 is good to have, but if you go over 100, the performance will be degraded. So let's say you have uh, 50 dimensions in the database level. And if I add any particular dimension from that 50, then that dimension will be called as cube dimension. Here, if anyone asks you how many cube dimensions are there and how many um, database level dimensions are there, then you have to answer like, okay, two cube dimensions, one is product and another one is customer, whereas three database level dimensions, one is product, another one is date, and the one is customer. So this is specific to cube. This is specific to database. And when you try to browse the cube, you can see only these two. Let's say if you, if you want to browse this AdventureWorks DW cube to see the data for analysis purpose, you can see only these two. So the dimensions that has been added at the cube level are called cube dimensions. Uh, and we can see, uh, I mean, users can see only cube level dimensions. They can't see uh, these dimensions here, okay? Now, uh, let's say I have added one more cube. Pretty quickly, I'll add one more. Mm, let me go ahead with this and you can see this is my first cube and this is my second cube I'm adding one measure group here let me select the factory seller sales and let me add um, data so if you ask me uh, how many cube dimensions are uh, in the adventure box DW 2014 cube there are four or in other words two I'll explain that too and in AdventureWorks DW, it's product and customer, whereas AdventureWorks DW 2014, it's customer and the date. Okay, so it's it's basically, if you add, I mean, if you create a database level dimension once, you can add this database level dimension to n number of cubes. Okay, so one dimension was there, or one dimension product is there or customer is there in the database level. And the same is used in both the cubes, even in this cube and even in this cube. So that is the difference between database level dimensions and the cube level dimensions. And you can set a lot of property values at the database dimension level, but not at the cube database, cube uh, dimension level. So that is one important difference. If you see, you can see very little dimensions, uh, little properties that you can change at cube dimensions. Whereas if you go for uh, database dimensions, you can see a lot of properties that can be set to the dimension. So this is about the cube dimension. This is also an important interview question. People will ask you, uh, what is the difference between cube dimension and the database level dimension? So it's good to know this one. Now, for now, let me delete this. I don't want to confuse you by adding more cubes. Um, let, let's keep with uh, one cube. And you can see one measure group added and two measures added and two dimensions added to this. And relationship is given between one dimension and the measure group table, but the other dimension and the measure group, to group table are not related. Okay, fine. Now let's process this.
Okay, it's already there. It's asking me whether to overwrite or not. Run. Okay, the process is succeeded and let me quickly show you how you can browse cube level data. When you, op when you select the option browser, you can browse cube level information. So let me select the fact, uh, the sales amount and the tax amount and let me select, um, let's say any product or color. So this is how you can browse and you can see the browser option is slightly different compared to 2008 R2 versions or earlier versions before SSDT, uh, if you're using BITS, Business Intelligence Development Studio, you, you see a little difference in this browser option. You can drag and drop columns, you can drag and drop rows, uh, but that has been changed, but it's only, you can drag and drop into two dimensional. It is column, sorry, it is rows, rows and columns. So you can see I selected color, color wise sales amount and tax amount. So this is good. Now, what will happen if I select any one customer? Uh, can you see anything fishy here? Yes, uh, it is the same sales amounts and same tax amount. This is basically, if you take out this guy, the same, the sales amount and the tax amount, what is at the, when you don't drag any attribute, so the total sales amount and the total um, tax amount will be repeated for every first name and every last name. Uh, sorry, every first name if you drag. And if you drag, let's say gender. So first name, this guy's gender and same tax amount and the same sales amount. The reason is the relationship. So the relationship is hard. If I don't have the relationship, then it is of no use. Now what I can do by using this dimension, customer. It is not going to help me in any in any way, right? Let me take over this and let me add the email address. And for every email address, it is the same sales amount. And even if you see the email address, it's a little different. I mean, yeah. So it's, it's the same, right? The same sales amount and same tax amount. And uh, even though I have a lot of attributes here, it's of no use. I can't use even any single attribute to analyze my business because of the relationship. So that is why relationships are very, 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 very important in the cube. If you don't have relationship, then it will, um, it, it will, it, it's of no use. Now, what will happen if I remove the relationship between these two? So what will be the output if I process? So here, if you see before processing itself, it's throwing an error saying that measure group, fact internet sales, no dimensional relationship exists. The measure group fact internet sales is not related to any dimensions. That means, so we have one, one measure group, which is not having relationship with any of the dimensions, any of the cube dimensions. So if, there, if any fact table is not having relationship with any of the dimensions, then do you think the fact table can be used for analysis purpose in any way. The only thing that you can get is total sales amount and total tax amount. Apart from that, you can't see product wise data, you can't see color wise data, you can't see customer wise data, it is of no use. So what analysis ever, what uh, Microsoft has come up with is like, you will need to provide relationship at least with one dimension for every measure group. So this is a measure group. At least one one dimension should be related. Let me re relate this one for now. Now let me try to process it. Now this works, the processing works because it has relationship with customer, customer dimension. So what analysis server says is like, when you, dip, when you add a measure group, make sure that at least one of the dimension is related with the measure group. Let me reconnect and let me use the first name. 
and you can see the data is split based on the first name correct like this and now let me use color now it is showing duplicate data junk data so the relationship is very important here now let's see how we can set the relationships okay you need to click on this to set the relationship and there are five relationships among which um, sorry six relationship in total we need uh, the first five the last one is data mining not in our topics so let's discuss this five relationship the first one is known one to you guys no relationship means the dimension and the fact table are not related so why there will be a dimension without relationship with the fact table any guess um, sorry um, so here if you see I added one more measure group table and this is having relationship with this product but this fact is not having relationship with this product then how to set that so you need to define no relationship so this no relationship is used when a dimension table is not related to one fact table but related to the another fact table if there is any dimension table which is not related to any of the fact table then it's as good as deleting the dimension not having the dimension in your queue if this product is not relating to any of your fact table then what why you are in in which analysis i mean for which analysis you are going to use this uh, dimension it's of no use right unless you want to show some hard-coded values or the distinct values of a particular attribute uh, it is of no use so the case the no relationship will come into picture when you have multiple measure group tables and one of the dimension is not related to one of the fact table then you go with no relationship that is default and if you don't have relationship in the data source view defined then it won't set here too let me go back and delete this guy so that is the first relationship no relationship if the fact table and the dimension is not having a direct relationship or indirect relationship then we set that or analysis services by default set that now the second one regular relationship and if you see the images here when i change it you can understand what the relationship is so the dimension table is joined directly to the fact table so what schema we call it as if every dimension table is directly joined to the fact table it's a star schema when you have a star schema then uh, you will have all regular relationships okay so the regular relationship is nothing but a simple inner join or the join in uh, sql concepts so when the dimension table and the fact table is related to the foreign key relationship then we set it as regular relationship in analysis services so what you need to know here is uh, what is the common column or what is the column that is used to, to set the relationship between these two tables the common column is product key I know that and in the measure group table you have to set now here you are lucky you have the same column name sometimes you'll be having PRD key or product uh, underscore key they will not be the same matching name so in that case you need to understand the database very well like what is the common column and how these two tables are related what columns are used in these two tables relationship then you have to specify it okay so like this and if you have a composite column you remember the composite key in your key column well, let me show you quickly let's say this is my key column right and let's assume it's been built by um, using a composite key like not only product key but also some other key combination of these two find oh, I mean forms the primary key and these two columns are available in the fact table and you have joined these two directly then what will happen is um, if you select this here and if you set to regular relationship and if you select product key those two columns will be shown here or three columns or four columns how many columns you used to, to define the key column of the dimension or that means the granularity attribute that is product key will be uh, that many columns will be selected here and the matching columns you have to select from the measure group table okay so here there is only one click on okay the regular relationship is set between the product dimension and the fact internet sales measure group and if you observe here it's saying the granularity attribute granularity attribute is uh, the least level or the leaf level of the dimension or at which that dimension data is available in the fact table 
So for the product dimension, what is the granularity or the leaf level or the root of this? The root of this one is product key. So everything should fall into the product key, right? So in other words, we call it as the primary key column or the column that is common in both the dimension and the measure group. So uh, you call that one as granularity attribute. And uh, this is nothing but the dimension table, which the table which is used to build this dimension. And this is nothing but the measure group table, the table which is used to create the measure group. So this is about regular relationships. So if you want it in picture, like let's say this is your attributes of a dimension, okay? And every attribute will be having a key column. And this key column will be used to join with the fact table. And fact will have a lot of data. So this key column, right? So the, the key columns which we use to join, it will not be roll up to one I'm saying. I'm saying all these attributes are dependent on this column. And this will be joining with the same data column in the fact table. And this fact table will have multiple other columns. Too. So this is basically used to set the foreign key relationship, the granular attribute, or in other words, the primary key column. Now, we have seen regular relationship. Let's see the next one, the fact relationship. So the fact relationship generally will come into picture. If I select this by seeing the ima uh, uh, images here, you can easily understand. So the fact relationship basically is one, it's actually these two are merged. So when the dimension table and the fact table are same, then we set the fact relationship, okay? And um, let me show you an example. We have a product dimension here and product wise sales amount I can get it here but if I want to see color wise product count correct I need the count of products table the count is my measure and that should be from my product table so I'm going for new measure I'm selecting dim product table and I'm selecting count of rows instead of sum I need count of rows so in that case, I can't select any one column because count will be on top of the table. It's, it remains same if I select any column. So count of product subcategory key is equal to count of standard cost or count of stock uh, safety stock level, right? So it won't allow you to select any column here if I click on OK. And let me rename it. Mm, products count sounds good. Okay, now if I go to here, you can see the dim product is added or let me rename it to products and uh, if I see here the product dimension by default the relationship is set because um, I mean with the fact relationship this icon says it is fact relationship and that the reason is it knows okay this is the same fact I mean this is the same table I used for creating the dimension and this is the same table I used for creating the measure group then I know the common granular I mean granularity attribute. The granularity attribute of the dimension is product key and the same product key will be available in this table too because the measure group table is same as dimension table. So by default, it will set it. So here you can see, you don't need to set this. By default, it will take it if it is fact relationship. And let me process this and let me show you what's the advantage of uh, adding the products measure group here. So this is the example. Uh, you remember when we discussed about the fact and the dimension table, I said not all the dimension tables acts as the, the all the master table acts as the dimension table. So product product is a master table, but I used it as a fact table here. Correct. So now let me reconnect, and this button is to erase. Where is the erase button? Somewhere here. Okay. Um, I can see the erase button. Okay, clear grid will be fine. Okay, now if I go to the products and if I see the count, it is showing 606. So the total products that are available in the database products table is 606. And if I select color, it will give me color wise products. So this is also sometimes uh, asked by the users like how many products are there in the color black, in the color blue. Not only this, this is just an example. If you need something like to get the count of a particular dimension table or measure group table or particular uh, entity, then you can go ahead with this 
count aggregate function and you can give the relationship like this the fact relationship so the fact relationship is basically comes into picture when the dimension table and the fact table is same in our case it is dim product so this is about the fact relationship so if you see here the fact relationship and regular relationship are almost same it will be having the joining let's say instead of fact if i give regular the grand letter will be product key what is the grand letter of the this one it's again the same product key click on okay both are almost same but i observed in couple of cases the data uh, is not coming correctly when you use the regular in the case of fact in this case right so i suggest you to go ahead with the fact relationship if both the dimension table and the measured group table are same so we have seen uh, no relationship regular relationship and fact relationship the next one is referenced so the reference relationship by seeing the picture you can see the dotted line here it says that the relationship between the yellow table that is fact table and this dimension table that is a blue one is made through some other table and the other table here is the dimension table the blue colored header right so that means it is dimension table so the dimension table is joined to an intermediate table this is the intermediate table which in turn is joined to the fact table so there is no direct relationship if it is direct then it goes to regular if it is star schema relationship then everything will be regular but if it is snowflake then this reference will come into picture where the oops where the dimension table and the fact table will be linked through some other dimension table the, what which we call it as intermediate dimension table now before going to that let's see what the schema we have in our data source view so if you see the schema uh, i have product dim product fine let me remove few things which i don't need and for now let me keep it simple okay reseller sales i don't need it because i'm not using it and sales territory for now i'm not using it and dim product i need it employee i'm not using just to show you in a better way i mean if you have more and more tables like this then okay dim account i don't need it okay now i have very little number of tables what is this which is not okay i removed the relationship between these two okay i have only three and uh, let me set the relationship to customer to customer okay fine now arrange the tables and uh, we need to add a table here which will form which will we, using which we can use the reference relationship so uh, if i go to add and remove tables so this is my fact table and i have added the dimension table right or dim product all these three are named queries so none of those here none of those are, that is why it is not showing here now what i'm gonna do here is i know dim product subcategory is related to dim product okay let me show you how the relationship is so product subcategory is related to this okay now if you see this fact table is related to dim product subcategory table through intermediate table which is also a dimension in turn right now what i have to do here is first i need to create the dimension using the product subcategory and uh, use existing table fine product subcategory key is selected and english product subcategory name and product category key and let, give, let me give it as product subcategory click on finish so the dimension is created at the database level let me add this to my cube level so product subcategory and if i go to the dimension usage here now uh, this is our fact table and this is the dimension table which is directly related and to relate this product subcategory i am gonna take the help of intermediate dimension table that is product which in turn it is related to fact table right that is what the relationship means like the dimension table will be related to the fact table through some other dimension table intermediate so let me show you how we can give the relationships here 
So if you feel, if you know that the relationship is referenced, okay, it is not directly related to the fact table, but it is related through intermediate dimension table, then go to referenced and select intermediate dimension. What is the intermediate dimension here? Product and uh, what is the relationship between the reference dimension and intermediate dimension? It is through product subcategory. There is no product subcategory in my intermediate dimension table. My intermediate dimension table here is product. So I need to go back. I don't say I didn't select that attribute. So product subcategory key is required for setting the reference relationship. And hence I added this. Let me go back. Let me select referenced and let me select team product and the columns or the attributes that are used to join or give the intermediate relationship is product subcategory key and materialize it's a good to go with materialize what it will do is it will join and it will create a, what we call a materialized view instead of having maintaining separate tables so if you have only one reference relationship this is the first reference relationship right which is using to product uh, which is using product to join to internet sales you don't need to materialize it but if you have more than one then you need materialize let me show you that one too. click on ok and um, it, it basically materializes it, it concretely creates a joined table based on product subcategory and product while querying uh, i mean while processing so if i process it now click on run so it is succeeded and i'll be able to see um subcategory wise data here i don't want this sales amount and the tax amount and let's say i selected subcategory and it will give me the sales based on the subcategories and if i select product and under that then it will show me subcategory wise what are the products and its data split it into product and product subcategory now let me add one more table into the data source view uh, which is related to this oops i don't want this okay product subcategory okay the next one if you see here fact internet sales is related to dim product dim product is related to product category product sorry product subcategory and product subcategory is related to product category and now this fact relationship uh, sorry fact internet sales and the dim category is related to through two intermediate dimension table first one is cat subcategory and another one is dim product now let's see how we can create uh, a dimension with this and how we can relate with the fact table so let me go select the product category click on next i just need product category name that should be fine i don't want spanish information at all i'll name it as product category and finish and let me add this dimension to my cube product category and uh, here if you see now the regular again it's a reference relationship what is my intermediate here whether it's a product or product subcategory so it is product subcategory so this category is related to product subcategory and product subcategory is related to product and so on now through what attributes it is related what is the relationship uh, common column between these two it's product category key and if i don't give materialize then it will say the relationship is defined through another reference relationship defining chains of reference relationship requires that all participating relationships be marked as materialized in order to create a valid relationship check the materialized option so click on ok and now if you process it it will process and you will be able to see the data based on category and subcategory and product the sales information and the tax information so uh, this is how you can set regular fact and reference relationship the key here is to understand how the tables are related and what tables are used for what like creating the dimension or creating the measure group and you need to identify that first and then how these tables are related and what relationship is suitable for joining a measure group and a dimension in uh, the cube designing pad so that's it for today and we'll cover the last and the final one that is uh, many to many relationship in next session and we'll continue our discussion with the other stuff like translations uh, partitions calculations and the different tabs of this cube designer